Hello everybody and welcome to the first edition of Treasure Hunting brought to you by bestfinds.ca and I'm your host for today, Dan. And we're going to be talking today all about silver and gold and precious elements and how to make loads of cash buying and selling said elements. So, let me have a seat and get started. As I am my own cameraman, bear with me as I get started. So, the first lesson today. What are we going to talk about? Silver is the first element we're going to discuss. Now, silver's atomic number is 47, as if you cared to know that. But you do know that it's valuable, right? Look, this is silver. It's pure silver wire, and it's the most reflective element in the world. Did you hear what I said? Listen, it's the most reflective element in the world. Not even gold is shinier than silver. So bling, you've heard the word bling? Nothing blings more than silver. Okay, the chemical symbol is AG. That's from the Latin. For those of you who would like to know Latin, it's Argentum, which is similar to the French Argent. And there you have it. That's the introduction to silver. Now, how do we identify silver? Well, you need three things. First, you need a magnifying glass or a, a loop. Loop. I hate mispronouncing it. It's a loop. Uh, I'm sure you've seen these before. It's this th thing here. Okay, and what you do is you hold this up properly. And the way you do that is you stick this part of your thumb onto the bridge of your nose where your glasses would rest. That's the proper way to view using a loop. Now, aside from the fancy terminology, I am going to show you some other ways to identify silver because think about it. And I want you to listen carefully. If I took a bunch of iron and melted it down and I decided to put a stamp on the back that says sterling silver, well, who, who would I be to tell the difference? I wouldn't be able to tell the difference because I'd only be using visual detection methods. If we only rely on the loop, we're going to get fooled. So you need another thing. You need a magnet. Now, this is from the dollar store. It's a neodymium rare earth magnet and it comes in the form, it was called rattlesnake eggs. That's what it was called because when you take two and you put them together, it makes a snaky sound. And just to say, you can find powerful magnets for cheap. You don't have to go looking very far and furthermore, you'll need one, so go get a magnet. Okay, did you hear what I said? Now, why do you need a magnet? Well, look carefully. Silver and precious metals that we're examining today are not magnetic. Look, see how it doesn't stick? And now that only works if it's pure metal. If it's silver plated, well, it's going to stick. The magnet's going to stick. And I'll show you that. I've got an example of some silver plated flatware. And we're going to examine them. So here are some spoons. Okay, there's two kinds of spoons that I brought out for you guys. And the first one is silver plate. You won't be able to see it. Um, I will try to make this be seen for the camera, but I, you're not going to be able to read it. It actually doesn't say that it's silver. It says 
South Seas Community. Pardon me, South Seas Community. Now I don't know what that is. I got this at an estate sale at an auction. And for those of you interested in you know, Googling that, I'd be surprised to see what you'd find. But here's how I know that it's it's silver plated. I've done my tests already. But look at the first the first thing. Look, we notice that it's not magnetic. Now we might be tempted to think it's solid silver. But we actually can't tell. There might be a coating of silver and have some other non-magnetic metal underneath like zinc. Zinc is not magnetic. Okay, do you follow what I'm saying? If you want to know about gold and silver, you got to know about the other metals too because a lot of people fake gold and silver. They they make things that are similar looking. But what you can't fool is the chemical eye and I'm going to introduce that right now in the form of Schwarzer's solution or potassium dichromate okay plus nitric acid so that's what's known as the silver testing solution in in the treasure hunting world okay it's actually this stuff and it's easy to find I'm gonna demonstrate what the purpose of this very valuable substance is when you're treasure hunting so moving along by the way here's the original here's the original chest that came where in which came the flatware this was at an auction at Kay's auction by the way and that's in Winnipeg the owner and proprietor Andy Kay is a legend a local legend and if you get the chance to go to one of his auctions you will certainly be part of history because I don't know how much longer he'll be doing this but uh, incredible man and we actually bought this chest you won't believe how much we paid we paid 10 bucks for this chest and I'll explain to you how it happened <clears throat> oh. as you can see it's lined with velvet and it was actually f th these slots that you see inside they were actually filled with just regular cutlery such as stainless steel knives, steak knives and underneath in the compartment on this space right here that's where all the goodies were and there's actually a, I've got a, a lot of flatware let's just put it that way so just to tell you you know Andy held this up Mr. K, Andy K from Kay's auctions, he held this up, and no, you know, nobody was bidding on it. This was late in the auction; tired people had gone home. We paid ten bucks for this, and at the time, I even <laughs> oh boy, Case just took a beating, but you know, that's not what's important. Actually, it is what's important because initially, my mom was bidding on it for the case. She said, "I want that flatware case." and she wanted to pay 10 bucks for it. I thought it was a bad idea. I remember telling her, don't bid on that flatware case. It's <laughs> it's not worth 10 bucks. Lo and behold, inside, there were just dozens of silver gems. I'm gonna show some of them off to you. And We went off on a tangent there, but this is about treasure hunting and I want to show you how I got these and why I knew that they were good. So first, we showed you, look, not magnetic, okay? There's no stamp that says anything other than South Seas Community. So it, it, it doesn't tell me that it's silver. It's not magnetic, so I'm inclined to think, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's zinc or maybe, I, I don't know what's underneath there, but that's worth more investigation, right? Now, let's look at this other one. Again, very hard to see for you guys, and even I need a magnifying source, but it, what it actually says is it's got a 90 stamped on there, 90. Now, <clears throat> you guys know that sterling silver is 925 purity. That means 92.5%. So, what we've got here is not sterling. And I was actually just grabbing my pen because I'm going to write that down for you. 
92.5%. Okay, that is the amount of silver in a piece of sterling silver. The rest is copper. Okay, the remaining seven or whatever percent is copper. And if if I were better at math, I could have told you the exact percent, but let's just say that this is our benchmark for quality silver. Okay, and the English invented it. They decided this is the silver standard, uh, the sterling silver standard. So in order to be treated as silver, you had to have at least this amount of silver. That's the the amount of silver you need to qualify as sterling. So this one says nine zero, so it's just shy of that. But since it's just a stamp, maybe we'd be better to uh, to test it with the solution, silver testing solution. Okay. Now I I am going to put on some safety gear because this is a dangerous chemical, it's nitric acid. Any acid in concentration like these can be hazardous, so you know, wear, wear rubber gloves as appropriate and eyewear. And consult your material safety data sheets as well as, ha uh, you know, adult supervision, blah, 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 all that, okay? Don't, don't be stupid. This is fun for treasure hunting, but if you're under 18, you shouldn't be messing with this and you should have the supervision of an adult. So, put the glasses on and the gloves. <clears throat> We're ready to begin the first test. Now, this particular substance is orange, okay? And this is important because I had trouble figuring this out at first, but you know, I watched a couple of internet videos and now I've got it. Look, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour some of this just on some paper so you can see the color without any other interaction with okay so there it's an orange color now when it touches silver it will turn pure red but before we mess with the silver I, I want to show you guys the neutralizing agent and that's this stuff so it would be a, a base Okay, something that would counteract it, kind of like the baking soda and and uh, vinegar reaction that you've seen before, and that's exactly what it looks like. And that's why you you want to have your your I oh you see look what I've done, I've gone and messed up my mom's cloth. Do not tell her. Again, folks. I can't stress this enough. When you're messing with this kind of stuff, you're going to want to do it in a proper environment, not on a nice old Victorian tablecloth. Oh darn. Okay, I'm going to have to deal with that some other time. So you saw the reaction. It was it was pretty energetic. And that tells us eyepieces and Safety gear, safety gear is required because it can splash around, and it's really not a joke. 